Um, the G20 summit is starting in Bali this week. Uh, it is, uh, by all accounts, probably the most strained G20 uh, conference. Um, 19 advanced emerging economies and the EU uh, are coming together Vladimir Putin has said he will not attend in person. That was a big question uh, whether he would or not, but he may uh, attend virtually in some sessions. Steve, what are you uh, going to be looking for as they all gather in Bali this week? I, well, the most important is is the, the Biden C meeting. I mean, the, the U.S. Uh, tensions are so high right now. This is the first in-person meeting they've had since since President Biden um, uh, took office. They've met previously. And so we're, you know, the, the real question is, can and they- And they're, they're expected to meet on Monday. They, they're meeting on Monday. And, yeah. and the question is, will they be able to set a floor under the deteriorating relationship? That's, like this, the expectations are so low. <laughs> can we just keep things from getting worse? And if we can meet that, that will kind of be a victory. There's so much to talk about, mm. you know, that's on the agenda, Taiwan, Russia. Oh, nuclear war. Maybe mm. that might come up, right? North Korea. A bit. North Korea. <laughs> techie. So there's so much yeah, to talk about. Yeah. Just set a floor. If we could do that, I think that, it, and Angela will go much deeper on this, businesses will have a, a sigh of relief that it's not going to get worse. What are you yeah. looking for, Angela? So I'd, I'd add to that. I mean, just to build on C's point and then more broadly, you know, Let's remember, both Biden and Xi are Im off almost immediately the back of really intense domestic political processes, right? So they finally have at least a, a window, a, a tiny sliver of sunlight of breathing room for both of them, mm, right? Yeah. So we see this, you saw last night, overnight, the announcements about the potential, you know, or the, the easing of COVID restrictions in China. Just a little bit. But again, pass that domestic process. Mm -hmm. Now there's a little bit more movement uh, that you can have, probably same on the U.S. side. So I think Steve's right. I think it's it's great they're talking. I think, you know, the G20, people say, is the G20 even, you know, kind of worth doing or what, what really comes out of big multilateral meetings like that? And there are some things we can talk about in a second. But the main thing, I think, are the bilaterals. And remember, I don't think we see Xi and, and Biden have the opportunity to meet if it weren't for the G20, they wouldn't, they're not in a position to be able to reach out to each other, you know, unilaterally to, to ask that. So I think it's good they're meeting. And they'll be meeting in Jakarta, actually. They won't be meeting in Bali. They're in Jakarta at the presidential palace. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's setting a floor. Yeah. It's in, in, in it's as again, as this, as this call we had with uh, the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, as he said recently, there's a lot of conversations that are happening uh, between China and the U.S. that are we don't know about in the media, right? Sure. That they're unlike the Trump years, that where channel. everything yep. was happening and you knew yep. everything when it when it was the minute it was happening. And so he he had cited conversations they were having about um, Ukraine. Also, he they'd had mm -hmm. them with North Korea. So actually, being able to talk privately off the right, you know, off media about what those red lines are, and just being able to put you know a bit of a box around that to reduce risk more broadly. Yep. So Steve, finally, the red wave didn't happen. Uh, Ukrainian troops are making tremendous progress into Kherson. The COVID restrictions are easing in China. Might we be cautiously optimistic about this G20 summit? I, I mean, cautiously optimistic that we can try and, and, and put guardrails around all the different crises that make up the poly crisis that we are, we're facing. But, but we, we still have so many flashpoints and Taiwan is out there. And, you know, Angel mentioned the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, as he was briefing ahead of the trip, he said, unprecedented, he said that the U.S. government will keep Taipei informed about the upcoming meeting. Now, of course, the U.S. always kept Taiwan informed whenever sure. there were meetings in the past, but they never said it publicly. Mm. So now China comes out and says, this is egregious. You're violating the one China principle. <laughs> and so you have so many flashpoints in the relationship mm. that that I, I will look if you want the optimism. If out of this meeting, we set a floor and, and the U.S. and China say, we're going to resume climate talks mm. because it's in both of our national interests and, of course, the world's interest for the two biggest emitters to be talking to one another. That would be a reason to get a little bit more optimism coming out of the G20. Yeah, and I'd add a couple Less more word. Yeah, optimis optimistic points more broadly <clears throat> in a, conversations with some CEOs and CFOs this week at Big mm. Roundtable. Right. Some, of the, some of the potential issues were don't miss the potential upside if we do see some solution to Russia, Ukraine coming sooner than we thought. And if we see the U.S. dodge a recession. So I leave that on an optimistic note. There we go. We'll hope for the best. We'll, of course, keep our eyes on it. And uh, thanks to both of you, uh, Angela Mancini from Control Risk, Steve Oaken from uh, um, 
wherever. Everything that you do. I don't even know which thing to put where first where, for you anymore. Wait, but... yo, you don't mention my shirt? He's got a great shirt on today. I 30. thought you were giving a, a new title what, today. Why don't you describe 30. the shirt since for those of us that can't see it on. Uh... So last year I wore a shirt that was 26 years old. This year I'm wearing the shirt 30 years old. This is from 1992. This was the first uh, campaign event I worked on with then Governor Clinton. We we did a race to the White House. We, we, we did a fundraiser. We ran down Pennsylvania Avenue from the Capitol to the White House uh, on the on the uh, what would have been the path for the inauguration, which of course he then marched in uh, about uh, you know seven eight months. And later. what's your shirt say? What race? Bill Clinton for president. The run to the White House, and on the back it says, "I'm Bill Clinton's running mate." And stay tuned next so. week because Steve's <laughs> going to tell us how he keeps his white so white. <laughs> over we'll give him the title. Years. We'll give the final word to one of our <laughs> listeners for Steve's title. She calls him the Wikipedia with smarts. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Pin. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We'll enjoy having you guys back again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. International news. Your